but I, I tell me all about it on air, and I'll be grabbing it on the break. Okay. I'm a pretty fast reader. You, you <laughs> sent it by email today, right? Uh, yesterday. So yesterday. Sounds good. And we are back on air on Thursday, the 15th, with one of the most important uh, minds dealing with the real agenda of Obama. And remember now, the green agenda isn't green at all. In fact, it's green maybe because it's like, uh, you know, when copper gets rusty or when things decay. It has nothing to do with environmentalism. People have to understand that the green agenda of Obama is totally a Rothschild banker agenda to use the dialectic of want of, quote, pseudo-environmentalism to take over literally the financial uh, apparatus of the countries, to make nation states irrelevant, to take away your liberty and your private personal property, and even your reproductive rights. So what we're dealing with Obama... We also don't want to go in the other direction. I've heard uh, various comments out there that, that have been floated about the idea of uh, secession and reforming the Union with a Constitutional Congress. And it won't work for several reasons, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the first thing that I see is uh, that all the states are so dependent on federal money, unless they reform, and each of them, like North Dakota, forms its own bank, and then they form a new reserve, U.S. Reserve Bank, then you have a lot more money, so you're not talking about blue and red states. You're having states that have enough money to maintain their infrastructure, their social programs, reduce the cost of education. And then as states, they're no longer beholden to the federal government that's literally, uh, if you want to call it blackmailing them with money that they print out of the thin air uh, and create debt through an inflatocracy where they literally are indirectly taxing us by devaluing the currency and the 401ks and everything. So... My prediction, if we don't counter Obama with doing state banks and doing this, is he will attack uh, the $6 trillion in our personal in, uh, uh, retirement funds that are all across the nation. He will tax us uh, federally to support health care, so uh, that money will have federal, uh, if you want to call it, strings attached. And uh, the move toward a secession can't work because a number of states that won't because they're blue states or they're so tied with the federal uh, government monies, even if they wanted to secede, they literally will go bankrupt and they'll have social chaos instantly. The only way to really solve it is, like Mayor uh, Amstel Rostow said, I care not who runs the country, whether it's communist, capitalist, or whatever. It's who coins the money. And so the real issue is a money issue, and which is why Adolf Hitler, his solution with Mr. Fetter, his, his uh, finance minister, wasn't uh, to reform the political system, it was to reform the financial system. The political system would follow. Once the states are empowered to have their own state bank, and they then come to, as a collective together to form their own state-run U.S. Reserve Bank. And that'll solve the problem. It also cuts off the power of the inflatocracy through the the uh, the liar in chief in the White House, the abominator who probably stole the election through voter fraud. It would allow us to also get rid of, uh, and it doesn't mean we have to even have another constitutional conference because it runs the risk of putting things in place that we may not want to be put in place. We don't want the in a sense, the Constitution become a living document. We want to return to it. And as states, we can enforce it by calling even a new election for a new federalized system after the fact and make Obama's election irrelevant. But you have to get rid of the financial issues first or you'll have bankruptcy and social disruption and civil warfare in the United States. So in other words, Obama will have his wish that he will be a Lincoln and he'll be presiding over a division of between the red and blue states and a true civil war. What does that sound like? Yeah. You, know, you mentioned uh, before the show, uh, Dr. Mike, you presented this idea uh, to, in Maine to the governor. What was the response uh, some years ago? Yeah, this is, um, uh, you haven't introduced me yet, but this is Michael Kaufman. And yeah, Dr. Michael Kaufman, by the way, <laughs> is one of the primary, as I did mention at the very beginning, Dr. Michael Kaufman, Ph.D., is one of the most important climatologists, environmentalists in modern history, helping senators and congressmen stop a number of moves over the last 20 years to destroy America by environmental craziness. Uh, and fiat control that would hand over power and resources to the United Nations. You know, thank you for the uh, kudos there. It's, it's, uh, you know, that's only one little small piece, though. What you're doing is extremely important. What others are doing is also extremely important. There's no one star in this. Everybody is trying to, to take our nation back to the, free, the base of freedom that our Constitution originally gave us. And I agree with you totally. What happened was here in the state of Maine a couple of years ago when Governor LePage was uh, elected and he had an all-Republican Congress for the first time in, I think, 60 or 70 years, 
here in Maine, uh, we thought we had some opportunities, and I developed a program, or at least I took a program, that would begin to convert the state's uh, coinage to gold and silver and get us out of the Federal Reserve. Because I don't know if you know this in the listening audience, but more than half of the um, owners of the Federal Reserve, and it is private, are Europeans. They're not Americans. They have no interest in protecting America. They want to have a world government. And we need to get out of that. I think you've probably discussed that many times, Dr. Bill, so I'm not yeah, exactly. going to go into it. But you do but it from problem, a very the important point, point of view. The, the point, the, the, what I want to do is reinforce what you said earlier, <laughs> is that the governor sat there and looked at me and basically said, we cannot do it because right now, because of the previous administrations that were very progressive and got us into huge debts and so forth, are requiring us that we have to take these federal subsidies in so many areas of our government if we all of a sudden abandon that, uh, we would go bankrupt. And I think that's what you were saying, is that all these blue states, and Maine is a blue state, uh, we just re-elected another democratically controlled co- uh, legislator, legislature, even though LePage is still governor. The fact is that we have gotten ourselves buried in debt, and it looks like we're going to go right back to the same thing. Yeah, so in other words, uh, you, you can deal with these other issues piece by piece once you get control of the financial issue. As I said, if you convert it to a medical situation, you don't take a person apart and put them back together again to heal them from cancer or a circulatory yeah. problem. Right. If the tumor is drawing away circulation, you put in a new heart and a new circulatory system that doesn't feed the tumor. The tumor is the Fed Reserve, which is run by globalists that want to control our countries. And that's what we have. We have a globalist banker. George Soros is a globalist banker. His puppet is, is Obama Nokio. And he's literally putting in policies to make America a trade region and a globalist government. And so Obama's job is to make sure that America is no longer a sovereign, a separate state, a republic, but just a trade zone of a global government. I, and I back that up 100% because I've done the research to prove it. Uh, the Club of Rome even basically set that out as a template of the world back in the 1970s, that we have regional trading partners and so forth, no internal uh, real sovereign boundaries. That's what the uh, uh, NAFTA is all about. That was the North, North American Union effort of George Bush that tried to do that a few years ago. Uh, all of these things, and it's happening around the country, around the world. There's ten of them, I think, right now, of these uh, uh, economic uh, unions or regions that basically parallel what Daniel said in the Bible, even. So it's really, right. uh, it's really something that we need to be on uh, focused on. Now, down the road, maybe four, five, six years after the states each have separate banks and you have a new US reserve and you've nullified the power of the government to literally have a financial choke chain on every state then you can have a constitutional congress or an amendment yeah. to yeah. deal with things but i think what we need to do first is straighten our financial house in order first as mayor uh... Amstel rothschild said i care not what form of government you have but who makes and coins the money so I- the idea of secession would just bring civil war and would cause a collapse in the economy completely and would make us more digestible to a globalist uh, enterprise wanting to digest America just like uh, the author of the Grand Chessboard that said uh, some years ago that they wanted to balkanize Yugoslavia because it wouldn't hand over its resources to the United Nations. So they broke it up just like they're balkanizing the Middle East and these other countries so they can break them up to make it easier to digest them. Yes. I, I totally agree with that. Uh, that's exactly what seems to be happening. Now, it could vary a little bit from what we're saying right now because we don't have the crystal ball and we're certainly not profits. But at the same time, that's the direction we're going. And if you really want to depend upon the Bible for some uh, some insight into that, that's what the Bible says, too. It was written 2,000, 5,000 years ago. Yeah, and now I, I'm saying that this is what should be done. I'm not saying is what's going to be done. I agree. What we see. I agree, totally. What I, see, what I see happening, if you look at the Bible, is my proposal, which is literally the only way that you can yeah. solve it, not secession and right. all this other stuff, unless you have right. a constitutional Congress, after you have a U.S. Reserve and you've reformed and you have a complete disconnect from the so-called Federal Reserve teat, then you can talk about constitutional Congress. But the idea of Absolutely. doing it beforehand is dangerous and destructive. Yep. Drug resistant super. Welcome. 
we'll come back and uh, I'm writing a series of white papers to solve each of these and I uh, and I really believe that uh, you can have a constitutional Congress down the road, but you have to solve the financial issues first, and you have to circumscribe and only certain issues will be dealt with. You don't want to rewrite the Constitution. It's like taking a person apart. What you want to do is two amendments, so you restore state rights over federal rights, and you, rest- and you keep federal issues over issues such as personhood of the fetus, and you deal with it like uh, Dr. Fred Graves talked about this, Ph.D., or, or J.D., uh, for jurisdictionary, where he says... All you have to do is have the Congress pass a law that says that the fetus is a person from the moment of conception and the fetal research and all the abortion stops. If you want to have a social safety net, it's very simple. Whatever monies you collect, go back to the county, not the state, and the county, through the state, would then decide uh, to, uh, to put up positions for primary doctors. Those primary doctors would hire everyone else. Uh, you know, the mid-levels and the specialists would all literally answer to the primary care doctors. And everybody would be paid uh, an hourly wage based on the years of experience and training, and it would be a proper, we call a chain of command, just like in the military. Easy to do, fraction of the cost, it would allow innovative care, and you also get rid of what we call federal licensure, state licensure. You have federal licensure, not through a federal government. You want to get the federal government out of this. You want to have the professional organizations themselves. So if you move from one state to another inside the Union, the United States, you can move from Alaska to another state. So in other words, there's solutions to the financial problems, the austerity fascism, which is now rearing its ugly head, and Obama will apologize to the people where he says, well, all these entitlements are on the table too, by the way, poor Democrats. So all these Democrats that voted for Obama, they're going to get a hell of a shock when they realize that, yes, you're at the table, but there's no food on the table. Yeah. That's a scary thing. And I don't think people grasp that how, what a sneaky, conniving maniac Obama is. He'll change his philosophy or his, 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 in order to, to still maintain power. He'll do anything in order to maintain power to make sure that eventually he breaks up America and destroys uh, by class warfare, race warfare, whatever. And we don't need to destroy our social safety net where we make education affordable. I don't think people should be saddled with major debt when they come up with a degree or training to, to advance our culture and our society. It's our best resources, our young people, to take education. And not just young, but middle-aged and elderly. Why can't they go back to school and retrain in new jobs? And most of them don't take four or five years. To right. be honest with you, most of the skill sets, even if and I talk to people, say, in the computer industry, if you aren't up to date and have taken a vacation for six months, you're out of date. You need to go back to school. So... You need a skill set. I call it employment. What you do is you employ through the, the, say, the state of California would send monies to an employer to train people, and during the first phase they're being employed, and then they become an employee. So they go from being trained and and uh, and sponsored, and the educational programs are run by companies, not by universities, not by these other schools. They can partner with online or regular colleges, etc., in order to produce these programs. But it would solve the problem immediately. Your unemployment level would drop, and all the people who have dropped out of even looking for jobs. We would move manufacturing back here because we would have proper trade embargoes against nations that treat us unfairly, like China. Uh, and we would rebuild based on our energy policy to have energy independence immediately, not 10 years down the road. We can do it today. Yes. So none of these things can happen, but the thing is the false environmentalism needs to be dealt with. Now, your website, you deal with this all the time in your books. Dr. Mike, I want you to tell us about the books and your websites and how people can find out. This is really, people are really mad since the election. I mean, I'm so, I'm so enraged internally, right to my bone marrow, but we can't lose our head over this. We can't think, well, we just need to secede without dealing with the first issues because without a blood supply from the federal government, these states, neither, neither can they secede or they'll, they'll crash and burn and you'll have social chaos and civil right. war. I, I agree. And the my latest, latest book is uh, Plundered, How Progressive Ideology is Destroying the World. And basically I define what progressive ideology is, where it came from, and how much damage it's done over history. I mean, this is something new. This has been going on for over 100, almost 200 years now. And it is basically destructive wherever this ideology gets into the government. It becomes very destructive and people die. Uh, it is it's so bad that unless we begin to identify it and call these people progressives, because that's what they are, they can't, there's not a rock they can hide under once they're exposed. And this is, you know, we can argue about party affiliation and Democrat versus Republican or conservative it's versus irrelevant. liberal. It's, a, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. It's 
Yeah, we got to sure get are. to the core of this. We've got to get at the heart. And the head of it is progressivism, which is extremely destructive. It led to communism. It led to Marxism. It led to all of these things. It's what's happening in Europe right now, why it's, uh, Europe is collapsing. Uh, all of these things go back and be, can be tra- tracked back to progressive ideology. And unless we begin to understand that, and again, the book is named Punitive, how progressive ideology can destroy or is destroying America. And right now we have a fantastic sale because it's normally $22. And we are giving it away for, or selling, I should say, for fourteen ninety eight. dollars wow. And also, along with that, we'll give you a free copy of Saviors at no additional cost. And Saviors, many of you may have already gotten it, is known as the primer for environmentalism. And I, it's basically what exposed the environmental movement as a religious movement back in the 90s. It's what basically provided the background necessary for me to effectively stop the Convention on Biological Diversity for being ratified in the U.S. Senate. Uh, all of these things. This is basic historical information that will help you understand what environmentalism truly is. Also, what progressivism is, even though I don't talk about progressivism and saviors, that the, it comes from the same, it's spawned by the same uh, worldview of progressivism, and the two books together are dynamite. Yeah, and this is really important that people grasp this. We need to talk solutions that are logical. Uh, you know, that, I made this medical analogy that you've got to change the blood supply of the nation. The blood supply yeah. is money. Yeah. Uh, and money basically is not just smoke and mirrors. It's literally like the Hamiltonian system. You'll have credit to do infrastructure like Nawapa. You'll have credit so you will have a social safety net. You can do it, but it needs to be done, not run by the state, but the monies need to flow through to the county. When it goes through the county, then the county says, oh, I, with my population, need X number of primary care doctors. Then you can solve the problem. The same with employers. You give the engine back and the credit back to the employers and say, hey, you've got so much money now. You can hire more people to create more goods and services, and now you can set up to have the money to do the training programs in conjunction with the local colleges. Kids are graduating from colleges and university with education that is worthless. Yeah, worthless. It it's really not, is. It doesn't, it's worthless because it doesn't really prepare them for a real job. It doesn't prepare them for real education. And we need to also expand what we call online and other avenues. So people that are already working that want to change their skill sets or elderly that want to work. I mean, I don't see we have a lot of discrimination why people as we get to what I call the biological uh, singularity where people are not only going to stop aging but actually get younger physiologically. Why we can't have 90 year olds going back to school? Why? Why can't we have 60-year-olds not just being greeters in Walmart, but actually going back to school to learn a new skill set and become gainfully more employed? Productive. Maybe they're more productive. And that'll right. stop the idea of retirement. First off, retirement is the back of a shovel on the plot of grass over your grave. The idea of retiring, you must be useful to somebody or you're soon going to die. The average male lives 7 to 11 months after retirement in America. Not good. If you're not retiring, it's hard to bury you. Yeah. <laughs> you need to have a purpose. <laughs> you need to have a purpose in life. Welcome back, and uh, Dr. Mike... Kaufman, Ph.D., climatologist. Your website is? Yeah, the current book site that we were just talking about before the break was is AmericaPlundered.com, AmericaPlundered.com. And on that you'll see the sale information and so forth and why the Savior's book is, is I think, important for us to understand where the environmental movement came from because it didn't happen by accident. Yeah, and then what's the full title of that book again? Uh, plundered how progressive ideology is destroying America. Yeah, now I, I was watching uh, uh, the uh, Fox News Network and uh, O'Reilly, and I think he has written on, on the uh, we call social progressives. He doesn't yeah. go as far as he needs to, though, because he gets timid when he gets to certain areas. Uh, the real solution to this problem is ultimately spiritual. The first republic in history was Israel, and the last republic in history is America. There's no other republic on earth. There are democracies, but democracy without the restraint to protect the individual from the state always decays to socialism and then eventually to totalitarian communism of whatever form like the communist Chinese have now. Yes. So the, the, unless you 
make it written in stone that this is a republic, that the individuals would be protected, then you're always going to, quote, make my, my work, my sweat, somebody else's right, and it's not. Yes, we have responsibility to take care of the poor, the elderly, etc. Yes, we have responsibility to defend our borders, but America has become the golem for the state of Israel to do things that are wrong. Uh, not that we shouldn't be protecting our allies, because Obama is basically going to stand by and let Israel get attacked, which will guarantee a Middle Eastern war. Right. But what we're doing is we're we're just not using our sense. I mean, we're deploying all these military, but yet we don't even go and attack the drug cartels in Mexico. We could clean the rat's nest out tomorrow. And on the other hand, we have states that are stupid enough to actually say they're going to make drugs legal. You don't make drugs legal, because then distribution becomes legal and say, well, we can make taxes on it. Yes, but every state that has legalized drugs has increased by 40 to 80 percent the amount of, Ill- of excessive use by young people to become right. biologically, emotionally, and mentally useless. Yeah, no, I know as a doctor, an and I, I've been in practice the third of a century, so when people want to argue with me, I said, you don't have the grounds to argue with me. It's just the way it is, okay? Yeah. It's almost like when I go and put my hands inside someone's abdomen, I'm assisting a surgery around the pericolic gutters, and I'm feeling a tumor or whatever. If you haven't been there, you don't know what you're talking about. I know. It's very, <laughs> very clear. And we have been educated, so we can't, just can't do any critical thinking. Uh, that's why I think we really lost this election is because we just are so dumbed down. And the, the whole thing with the medical issues, and so, you're absolutely correct. I, I can't agree with you more. It, it really, we really need to focus on how we can fix this mess that we're in right now. And I don't think succession is the answer. Yeah. Exactly. It's not the, not the answer. We can have a constitutional Congress if it's limited to the issue of, of restructuring the balance of power between the states and the federal government that progressively over the last 150 years from the monster Lincoln uh, and even before how they have changed the balance of power between the states and yes. the federal government. And that yes. needs to be reset to back to what the original framers of the Constitution were want. But you don't want to do that unless you sort out the financial issues first. Yes. If you do it otherwise, you're going to get civil war, and then we will make, we will make Obama the Lincoln of this century. Yep, I agree. I agree. Yeah. One of the There's things not- that that Obama is looking to do right now, I don't know if you have heard of this on the news or not. Those in the listening audience, I know you have, Bill. Yeah. Uh, that we are getting literally hundreds and hundreds of new regulations since the election. Uh, 68 a day. This, Every, yeah, since last week, 68 a day, and it's increasing. It's increasing. And one of the things that Obama has vowed to do is to basically shut down the natural gas industry. That we, Basically, we have the, the greatest ability to create the wealthiest nation in the history of the United States within three to four years. I mean, we have so much natural gas and so much oil. And I've been saying this since two, the year 2000. Uh, yeah. Traditionally, it sounded like a lone vo- voice in the wilderness calling out that we have more than enough energy to become energy independent, and yet Congress, especially Salazar as a senator, stopped every effort to develop that uh, resource. Now he is the, the Secretary of Interior and trying to do the same thing. It's happening anyway because it's, so much of it's being found on private lands that he doesn't have as much authority. But nonetheless, we have more oil and natural gas than any almost any place else in the world. You, you heard this uh, story that Japan wants to contract with a company out of the United States, a small gas company, that could supply Japan with its entire needs to convert all the nuclear reactors to gas reactors at a minimal cost. Yes. And uh, Obama personally will not give the export licenses to allow this company to sell... That, because they're buying gas right now from the Chinese at ten dollars per cubic meter, and they could buy it from us at say four dollars or five dollars a cubic meter, make a massive profit for us, and save the Japanese from another radiation disaster. Absolutely, yeah. I agree. Uh, it's this guy is diabolical. You cannot find anyone that is so diabolical or evil in the history of the United States. This man is truly, truly evil right to his core, and yet most of the American people think he's doing a fine job. We have been totally deceived. You know, the Bible talks about the great delusion in, in uh, I think it's either First or Second Thessalonians, right. and, and we're not there yet, but nonetheless, I can see how it can happen. Uh, it is unbelievable how people do not see what is going on right now because they live in a state of delusion. Well, I, I think Obama would play a very good part as the Pied Piper 
uh, with that little feathered yes. hat and a, and, a, and a green and, and brown jacket on and a little flute that he'd be playing as people's dancing around and, and all the various different uh, groups are following the Hispanics, the gays <laughs> and lesbians. Okay. Uh, and, and he's That's dancing a great around, description. And, and he's going up the side of the mountain. And it, of course, at the, mount, at the top of the mountain is, is actually a volcano. And he, they think they're going to a nice, warm place where they'll be safe. And it actually is the maw of an open volcano. It, yeah, I, I, that's a, outstanding. I think I'll use that example if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely, the Pied Piper of Hamlin. I mean, and really, he does that broad smile. It was in a few days after his inauguration in 2008. There's one little child that said, "Well, why do you think he got the prize?" I said, "Well, he got the Nobel Peace Prize because I like his smile." Yeah. Right. I mean, right. I call it the smile, like the smile on that giant snake in one of the Disney movies, you know, that, you know, that had that funny lisp. And, uh, you know, really is really diabolically evil. Yeah, really, yeah. people don't understand just how evil Obama is. I know. And, uh, you know, for quite a while, I was wondering whether if it's his ideology that makes him blind, which it can. You know, I mean, ideology is a very powerful <laughs> issue. But there's no way that he could not know what he is doing. When he sits there and tells well, Romney on national television that Romney doesn't know what he's talking about when Romney accuses him of trying to block all of our oil development, when the facts are right there, uh, there's a hundred, maybe a thousand different pieces of information to show I, how I don't he's think doing that, this. I don't think that he would know the truth if it hit him over the head like a two-by-four. Yeah, I, I agree. The fact is, uh, he's not just an empty suit. He's a husk of humanity and in, in literally uh, avatared by 10,000 legions of demonic entities. I don't know. I, I would I'd have to agree with you. I, and, uh, you know, you hate to say that about someone, but at the same time, I, you look I, I at what's on... happening, and it's just, it's just mind-blowing. Well, I know how he was produced. Uh, when you think about him, he's an illegitimate boy who basically grew up in a broken home, was sent away to his grandparents, who were alcoholics, whose father yeah. grandfather was a CIA agent who was obviously also a closet communist because he was taking double shots with Frank Marshall Davis, his real biological father, who seduced the mother, who was a communist as well, who was a very strange lady who took off after she dropped off, uh, you know, little Barry Satoro and sent him back to Hawaii to be there. And uh, so I prayed and I said, Lord, show me what happened. What happened to this little boy called Barry Satoro? Well, he was sent off one day with his little book bag and his... And uh, he went over to Frank's house because he got a call to go to Frank's house. And Frank prepared him dinner, and then showed him pornography, and then sodomized him. Yeah. So it's not surprising he's gay and lesbian and belong to the same uh, bathhouse as Rom, the cruel Emmanuel, who said, "Don't uh, miss any possible disaster. Don't let it go to waste because it's always a good time for social change." Yes, it is, and it has yeah. been demonstrated so for in many progressive administrations, including the Bush administration. That's why I call the high levels of all political systems in all countries the dance of the fairies, because at all high levels of masonry, they're always bisexual and pedophiles. In every country on earth. Mike Kaufman, and of course the website is uh, America Plundered. America Plundered. I'm also put up a, a number of other links that I think are very useful. We've got some other fantastic articles here. Let's talk about one of the latest ones you've done, Dr. Mike, that uh, is at the top of this. It's in the Range magazine. And it talks about the uh, climate fraud. Then you have a number of other articles in, in News Whose Views I've posted up as well, those links. Uh, let's touch some of the high points of these articles on the climate fraud and these other issues because Obama, his primary thing he talked about in the speech yesterday was how he was going to prevent the earth from overheating for future yes. generations. Yes, and that's one of the things that I think we have to understand. The whole climate man-caused global warming issue is a fraud. I mean, it is a fraud from the top to the bottom. And I, find, I have a Ph.D. and I minored in climatology. And I led a multi-million dollar research effort in the 1990s on global warming. So I know what I'm talking about. I've kept up with the field. 
And in this particular article, it's a fairly long article, but I go through it systematically and describe in, in language that you can understand why global warming, man-caused global warming, is an absolute fraud and how they did it, how NOAA has done it, how NASA has done it, how the climate uh, unit over there in England has done it, how the United Nations has distorted the data and so forth to make it look like man is causing global warming. Folks, it's really out there. The science is now backing up the fact that it's a natural phenomenon, not a man-caused phenomenon. I have all the information in this particular article, and it's in, it, right now it's on the front page of rangemagazine.com if you're interested, uh, because you have to understand why we do not need all of these carbon controls and carbon taxes and all of the other types of things to prevent carbon dioxide emissions and so forth. It's destroying this country. If we continue to go down this road, we're not going to have any economy. It's going to be literally decimated because there is a one-to-one -one ratio between our economy and energy and we are rapidly undermining our ability to have cheap energy well let, let's convert it uh, with uh, some of the terms of dr mishu ikako the very famous japanese uh scientist is all over television and documentaries and so on for the uh, history channel etc uh we in america have the largest amount of high color quality low sulfur coal on the planet we're like the saudi arabia yes. of coal we're now the right. saudi arabia of gas they're right. saying that, oh, in 2030, we'll exceed the Russians and so on. No, no, no. no, we, no. In 2011, exceeded. we actually export more oil than we import. We already are energy independent. We just don't have the balance sheet because Obama blocked the Excel pipeline. He wouldn't allow federal lands to be used for hydrofracking. And by the way, they don't need to hydrofrack with chemicals or hydrofrack in areas where they'll destroy the water table. There's lots of safe ways of monitoring this to make sure it's done in safe areas. It doesn't disrupt the environment. Double-hauled ships for moving gas and oil. Proper pipelines even down from Alaska through British Columbia. By the way, I used to work in British Columbia back in the 70s. We have a gas line already runs all the way from Williams Lake. Uh, you can easily run a pipeline from Alaska and connect it up to the Williams Lake pipeline and bring that gas all the way to U.S. Uh, sources now. If they got their butt moving and just decided to do it, the Exxon pipeline to the tar sands in Alberta and the gas fields of the Turner Valley uh, on the Arapaho Indian Reserve, there's no excuse why we need to get a drop of oil or gas from these maniac Muslim countries or let Russia laugh to all the way to the bank while the Middle East blows up because the more conflict there, the more money they get and the yes. more they extract from our economy. Yes. And, the, and Putin is laughing his head off at us being so stupid. We are inflaming the situation by supporting these Salafi Muslims and the caliphate. At the same time, we're arming the terrorists and then saying, oh, it's, it's such a shame that this uh, Ambassador Stevens and three Special Forces agents died when we actually armed them. Yeah, and, I know it. Uh, and, and, of course, we was already seeing the sources we have. We talked about this last week is that it was actually a scam so that Obama could grandstand that he exchanged the uh, captive uh, ambassador with a blind shake, uh, you know, because I think he thinks he's Rambo. I really think the man is so delusional, he thinks he pulled the trigger. I mean, they have comic yeah. strips and pictures now of Obama thinking he's got the Rambo outfit on, and he was actually the guy pulling the trigger after going up the stairs to kill the, quote, the already deceased by years, Mr. Uh, Tim Osman, otherwise known as Osama bin Laden. It's <laughs> just disgusting. It, it is, really. It really is. When you look at what is going on now behind the scenes, our federal government is so corrupt, unbelievably out of control. corrupt. Out of control. It's out totally of control. out of control. And yet there is this image that everything is natural, everything is normal, there's no problems, uh, no problem there, go someplace else. You know, look, look, don't look there, but look somewhere else. Uh, it is, unless we wake up, folks, and I thought we would do it in this election, and it didn't happen. I just am in a state well, of I, shock how dumb the ball, down I, the American I, people I, are. Even Romney, as a Mormon with Asperger syndrome yeah. and his magic underwear, could have solved it if he did three things. Number one, laid out his jobs program in more specific detail. Talked about the Hispanics about rapid immigration policy because the Democrats don't want to solve this. They want to use this in 2016, yes. so I guarantee yes. they'll dance around it and try to look like they're giving plums and so on, like his executive order so they wouldn't be deported, kids under 18. He doesn't want to solve the problem. They want to use this in 2016 as well. Yep. If the Republicans are smart to cut them off at the pass and put out a bill and say, look, we're going to have a congressional bill to solve it. And uh, to solve this problem, to not only not have a massive influx of people, but also have rapid immigration of the people that are already here. And people that are criminals, even if they serve one or two terms in the military and they're found out to be criminals, they need to be deported. 
Yep. And that solves the problem. Then people become real full citizens. They don't need to be in constant fear. And uh, they're usually social conservative Catholics, which means they're going to they tend toward right. the Republican Party. I, I would I would add one thing to that, and I think it's the education of our Constitution, because they do not yeah. have a cultural background. I think one of the reasons we still have a semblance of a constitutional republic is because of our cultural, genetic cultural background. The Hispanics that are coming in don't have that, and as a consequence, there is no way that they can understand what yeah, freedom I think and liberty truly is. Well, a lot of them are listening to this program, and I know them are, are in other programs like Alex and other ones, so they learn about the Constitution. The problem is we need to make it much more, how can I use it, friendly in Hispanic so they can learn yeah. that the only way you, your rights and the rights of future Hispanic and other Americans are going to be saved of all skin colors, I call the code of many colors, is if we don't decay to a race war and a class war, but we realize that all Americans, whether they're in Benghazi or anywhere in the world or in America, neither should starve to death, uh, find they get their health care cut off, or can't find a job. Uh, yeah. Or and can't breathe clean air and water and have real environmentalists, not pseudo-environmentalists like Obama and the crazy bankers that want to use it as a dialectic to keep the oil and gas in the ground and starve us to death while they reduce our population and shove us into highly compact super cities that they have total control of all the assets. And the middle class is gone. That's their plan. That's their plan. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. In the very same breath that he is trying to say he's trying to protect the middle class, he's destroying it. Oh, yeah, that's his plan. The thing is, Obama is just like the, the, the senior membership of the Politburo in Russia, where only 10% could belong to the Russian Communist Party, and only 80 million communists exist in China out of 1.4 billion people. Yeah. The whole issue is they want to have a, a, a proletariat of slaves that are owned property, human chattel, in the United States. And we're only a trade zone of a world government run by bankers. Yep. I totally agree. And, and not all bank, banks are bad. It's, it's that they're, it's being run out of the Federal Reserve. The, well, some the of the major banks, banks the, the major banks are the culpable ones. The major traders on the Wall Street and so forth are probably culpable. Uh, all of these yeah. um, these guys are the banksters that are running the world. Right, and I, I figured out a formula for determining the amount of money in any particular economy or state. You have a formula for the intellectual property capacity, the food property capacity, uh, the capacity to generate energy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and you've put all these into the formula to say, our state is capable of generating this amount of, quote, economy. In the Germans, yeah. what they did was use uh, the the hour of labor of one German citizen. I'd say the the money supply should be based on the capacity of your state and its people for generating real products and intellectual right. products and, and energy and food, and etc. And if you put that formula together, you could always expand the money to create credit, to go back to businesses and to have social programs that are rational and also get people feeling responsible rather than permanently unemployed. Yeah, um, you know what Obama wants is dependent people that are crying and are frightened, even if they're socially conservative, to to sucker up to the teat of the federal government so that they will get more goodies, just to have bread on their table. Yeah, I agree. It's a very dangerous thing, uh, and yeah. Obama is a monster, is what he is. He's a monster. Yeah, and we only got touched on some of the things we were going to talk about here in this last hour. We need to get you back on, Dr. Mike Kaufman. Again, we got lots of <laughs> lots of things to talk about. Uh, Dr. Mike, again, your website is americaplundered.com, and we have all the other links up. And again, that special again, if they get it, they're going to get the book for fourteen ninety eight, America Plundered and Saviors as well. Amazing deal. Again, lots to be thankful for. Pray to the Most High God that our republic yeah. will be restored. But it has to restore, number one, the hearts of the people, our financial system, and then we can talk about a constitutional Congress when we reform the republic but not rebuild a constitution from torn-apart nation.